Good afternoon. I would like to introduce Dr. Leanne Fowler and also thank Dr. Fowler for graciously sharing her knowledge and giving her time to make this informational video. After a brief introduction, Dr. Fowler will provide some updates on the pandemic and the vaccination rates of our region and in the state. Dr. Fowler has more than 20 years of nursing experience and over 12 years in academic nursing education. Her clinical expertise is focused on acute and critically ill individuals within the hospital setting. She is proud to serve as the director of the nurse practitioner programs and the program coordinator for the adult gerontology acute care nurse practitioner concentration. Dr. Fowler is recognized internationally as an Institute of Healthcare Improvement Fellow. She was in the class of 2020 for leadership and quality improvement, nationally recognized in the American Association of Critical Care Nurses in 2017 for the Circle of Excellence for contributions to and the development of critical care nurses and recognized as a Governor John Bell Edwards appointed member of the COVID-19 Health Equity Task Force for Louisiana. Dr. Fowler is especially dedicated to life of service to the profession and the community at large as an active member of several professional nursing and medical organizations and health-related or faith-based community organizations. She has formerly served or currently serves in various leadership roles in the state and at the national level. Dr. Fowler, briefly describe COVID-19, virus, hosts, and mutations, and the mechanism of transmission via coughing and sneezing. So the COVID-19 virus is an RNA virus. We know about the, these types of viruses. We have uh, other RNA viruses. The flu virus is one, influenza. Um, Zika is an RNA virus. Ebola is an RNA virus. So we know about RNA viruses. What we learned from the SARS coronavirus 2, which is the virus we're speaking of, that it develops COVID-19 illness. Okay. The way that it develops that COVID-19 illness is, is because this virus, and like RNA viruses, replicate quickly. They change quickly. Um, they transmit quickly. The reason why we had the flu pandemic we had uh, about 10 years ago is because of the nature of, of this type of virus. And so we see it again. However, the difference is the transmission rate with the coronavirus 2 virus is much greater. We learned that at the beginning of the pandemic in March of 2020. Now we have the Delta variant. The Delta variant of this SARS coronavirus 2 germ is even more transmissible. And the reason why is because variants, germs mutate to protect themselves. Germs mutate so that they can continue to live. Germs need a living host, and now it's a human, a human host, in order to live and spread. Variants of consequence are those types of variants that can overcome our defense mechanisms. So that's being our natural immunity, which we know is not as good as the passive immunity that we get from vaccines. Hopefully, these variants don't transform to variants of consequence because then we will have to look at a whole new type of vaccine and, and new protection. Thank you. Please provide updates on the pandemic, the Delta variant, and vaccination rates in our region and in the state of Louisiana? Sure. So the vaccination rates in the state of Louisiana compared to the, the United States uh, are low. Low, we're, we're below 50%. We're somewhere in the 40s. It could be better. It needs to be better. In the state of Louisiana, when we compare the regions, particularly the Orleans region, we're considered there are nine regions in the state of Louisiana. Region one is the Orleans region, where we are, the School of Nursing. In our region, we are one of the highest in the state. We're in the high 40s, 40 percent. However, what I want people to understand is that it varies among age groups. 
So what we know now is that the majority of those who are vaccinated, which makes sense because that's the way we rolled out the phasing of vaccines, are mostly among the older adults. 50 and older have the highest vaccination rates. As we go younger, we have lower vaccination rates, as low as 11%. So persons 18 years to 29 years old have an 11% vaccination rate. That's the population of the majority of our students, undergraduate and graduate. When we move up to 30 to 39, it's about 13%. We know that males are vaccinated a little bit less than females um, in the state of Louisiana and among those age groups. Um, among those age groups, we don't know the gender identity specifically but we do know the vaccination status. And, and when I say vaccination status, I don't mean those who initiated their vaccines, I mean those who have completed the series of vaccines. Why is it necessary to be vaccinated, especially as it relates to our nursing students, nurses, and healthcare professionals? It is extremely important. Well, first of all, as nurses, we are the most trusted profession in the United States, period. We have been for a number of years. People trust us. We spend the most time with patients most, most of the time, and we get to know our patients and their families, whether this is in communities where we nurse, or in churches where we nurse, or in hospitals where we nurse. So we, we take care of them, we educate them and we spend time with them. So patients listen to us. It's very important that we are disseminating accurate information. It's very important that we as nurses in our profession, we're not spreading the myths and the misinformation. It's very important that all of the sciences that we learn, that we use them. All of the research and evidence-based practice that we learn, that we use it and we look for the best available evidence to disseminate to our students, to our students and to our patients and to the community at large and their families. So it's very important that our nursing profession is vaccinated and that we are giving out the right messages. It's also very important for our nursing students. Our nursing students, just like nurses, will be in direct patient contact with people who are ill and with people who are healthy. So if the virus is looking for a, a living host and it is looking for some, someone to live within and to spread so that it can reproduce and multiply, it is gonna look for another host. Nursing students, will come in contact, direct contact, with those who are vaccinated, those who are unvaccinated, those who are vulnerable to infection, and those who, who may not be but can become vulnerable. So it's very important. That means all populations, infants, children, uh, adolescents. We have students who go into schools. We have students who go into nursing homes, um, you know, and into the community. So we need our, our students vaccinated. They're, they're still a part of that front line of de defense in healthcare. Now, you mentioned the word myth in your previous response. So, now can we talk about the facts versus the myths? The myths, how we think, how we feel, versus what the vaccine actually does and whether it will cause fertility or infertility, how it relates to comorbidities and immune disorders and weakened immune systems. Yes, so the, um, the myths that are related to fertility and fertility immune disorders uh, or any kind of comorbidities, diabetes, hypertension, this is what we know. What we know of those who are their categories of illness and those who are infected. So there are the majority of persons who become infected with the COVID-19 virus and disease, COVID-19 virus who develop the COVID-19 disease, they, they recover. The majority of those people who become infected recover. There is a subset of those who recover in the population 
who have, and we call them COVID long haulers, who, do, who have perpetual illness. They have dysfunction of their lungs. They may have to continue wearing oxygen. They may have brain fog or brain dysfunction, cognitive decline. They may lose functional capacity, meaning their ability to move, their muscle strength. Um, they may develop myocarditis or other muscle inflammatory disorders. Um, so that's, that's the truth. We know that. We know that the majority of, of the patients who recover and also have persisting illness after, during recovery of, of the virus, that they were mostly unvaccinated. We know that, that's the truth. We know that those who developed severe illness some of those who developed severe illness did recover with, with, with persisting illness from the virus, but many of those who developed severe illness succumbed to death. We know that the majority of those who had severe illness were unvaccinated. Right now, 97%, and it's more like 98 to 99% in some areas, of those who have developed severe illness to date right now are unvaccinated. They're unvaccinated individuals. We know that those who've been vaccinated with any of the three approved vaccines, that's the mRNA, Moderna and Pfizer, and the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, um, we know that it prevents severe illness. And those who have been vaccinated with breakthrough infections have not developed severe illness. We know that, we have the data. Um, for the last few months. So those are, are some of the truths. As it relates to those who want to be vaccinated in relation to their own fertility, that's male and female, in relation to breastfeeding, in relation to persons who are already pregnant or those who are looking to become pregnant, we have studies that show that the vaccine is safe in all of those populations. Okay, in all of those populations. In fact, the national organizations who monitor, medical organizations who monitor those studies and take care of those populations, um, and it's even the fetal maternal medicine uh, groups, and those are the highest risk pregnant patients, they all recommend getting vaccinated. Why is that? That's because the disease is more dangerous than the vaccine. We know that there are some side effects of the vaccine, particularly anaphylaxis with the mRNA vaccines. We know that there have been very rare occurrences of that. We know that even if you have had an, a history and an experience of anaphylaxis, that you are still recommended under close observation to get the vaccine. There are very few people with comorbidities who are not recommended to get the vaccine. If you have hypertension, if you have diabetes, if you have an autoimmune disease like rheumatoid arthritis, myasthenia gravis, lupus, any, rheum any of those autoimmune, HIV, any of those immune deficiencies, it is recommended to get the vaccine. It is very few people who it is not recommended for. And most of those are those who are, are acutely ill. If you are acutely ill, it is not recommended to get the vaccine at that time, you are to wait. If you have had a recent COVID-19 infection, it is not recommended to get the vaccine. At that time, you should wait and should follow the guidance of your primary care or your primary practitioner. Um, we know that those who develop myocarditis, because that has been a concern, a cardiac myo, you know, myocarditis, we know that those um, developed, there was a large study, this was a military study, and we can provide this, this resource to our, our audience later, but it was a large study over almost 1.8 million people were given the mRNA vaccine. Some Moderna, some receive uh, Pfizer uh, in military personnel. 23 of, of mil, 1.8 million persons developed a myocarditis. Of those 23, they have had recent COVID illness. The majority of that 23, those 23 individuals recovered quickly within a week, 
less than 10 days with regular supportive treatment. The others are recovered, but it took longer than a week, and they still recovered with regular treatment. We know that the correlation there is because of the recent illness of COVID-19 there from that study. Any last points you would like to make in closing? In closing, I want to recommend, highly recommend that, that all of our students and anyone in listening gets vaccinated. I think that is one way out of this pandemic so we can get back to our regular lives and, and we can go to football games and not worry, we can travel and not worry. Um, I want to send the message that we should still, whether we're vaccinated or not, be masking if we're in crowded groups. We should still be cautious because this variant right now is of concern, but we don't need the germ to progress with variants of consequence. And then we have to start all over again. Once again, I would like to thank Dr. Leanne Fowler for her partnership in making this informational video and hope that this video provides the data to make informed decisions for our students, nurses, and other healthcare professionals. Thank you.